After removing the board from the clamps, I gave it a thorough sanding with 80 grit followed by 120 grit, and now it's time to add the finishing touches. Now, a big board like this one can be difficult to handle sometimes, so we need to make it easier to pick up. I like to use a router with a straight bit to actually create recesses in each end for your fingers. Now, the, the dimensions of these recesses aren't really critical. You just need to be big enough so that a few fingers can fit underneath. I like to make mine about an inch and a quarter by four inches by a half inch deep. And after that, I like to add a quarter inch round over to all the edges. The easiest way to create consistent recesses is with stop blocks and an edge guide. In order to prevent chip out, be sure to take light passes at first and make your initial cut in a clockwise direction. This is known as climb cutting. Now, it's also a good idea to do your routing in two steps. I usually leave around an eighth of an inch for the final pass. This will ensure a nice, clean recess. I also like to use a quarter inch roundover bit to ease all the top edges. Once again, I go clockwise to avoid chip out. And finally, I use an eighth inch roundover bit to ease all the bottom edges. The areas that I can't reach with the router are rounded over with 150 grit sandpaper. Now the next step is to give the board a final sanding to either 180 or 220 grit. Now keep in mind, since the entire surface is end grain, the sanding is going to take a little bit longer than usual, but just be patient. If you see any little white scratches on the surface, you need to sand just a little bit more. Now it's time to talk a little bit about finishing. There are a number of ways that you could finish a cutting board, and there's a few things to avoid too. Now if you do a little research, you'll find a lot of conflicting opinions, and truthfully, none of them are really wrong. You just need to decide which is best for you. Now I'll demonstrate the most popular methods, and we can discuss a few of the others. First, there's mineral oil. Now you may see this stuff sold as butcher block oil, but please, don't waste your money like I did, and just go to your local supermarket or pharmacy and pick up some food grade mineral oil. It's odorless, it's tasteless, and it does a great job of repelling moisture. It's also an easy finish to renew whenever the board needs it. When applying mineral oil, the goal is to give the wood as much as it'll absorb. Flood the surface and wait several minutes. You keep adding oil as long as the wood keeps soaking it in. Wait five to 10 minutes and then wipe off the excess. After 24 hours, repeat the flooding process. Apply two to three more coats this way and your board will be fully seasoned and ready for the kitchen. Now a variation of the mineral oil finish involves the use of a wax, either a beeswax or a paraffin wax. I usually start this process on a board that's already received one or two coats of mineral oil. I warm up about a half cup of oil on a hot plate with a heat setting on low. Using a wooden mallet and a knife, I break off several chunks of wax and place them in the oil. This second piece of wax was actually cut on the bandsaw, which turns out to be a much better method. I usually add about 25% wax by volume. Give the mixture a good stir and be sure to turn off the hot plate as soon as the wax is melted. I like to use a clean paper towel to spread a liberal coat of the oil wax mixture on the surface. But be very careful with the oil just in case it's too hot. After covering the entire surface, I let the board sit for about an hour or so. At that time, you might notice droplets of oil pulling on the surface. Just wipe these away with a clean rag and let the board sit overnight. On day two, I give the board a second coat of the oil wax mixture and once again let it sit overnight. Finally, on day three, you should have a nice waxy board. I like to remove most of the excess wax with a paper towel and do my final buffing with a clean cotton rag. And when it's all said and done, you should have a nicely protected board. Now the second method, which is actually my preferred method, is to coat the board with a wiping varnish. You can buy varnish specifically for food items under the name Salad Bowl Finish, something like this. Now my favorite is made by General Finishes and it's available at rockler.com. I'll post a link to that in the write-up. 
I happen to have a can here of Balin's, which works just fine. Now, this is my preferred finish for a few reasons. First, I find it to be much more durable than mineral oil. The finish can take quite a beating. Now, second, it's much faster and cleaner to apply. Third, it truly seals the surface, making it less prone to harboring bacteria. Fourth, it doesn't need to be recoated nearly as often as a mineral oil board does. And fifth, I just think it looks a lot better. I begin by thinning my varnish about 50% with mineral spirits. With a clean cotton rag, I apply a nice liberal coat and keep applying the varnish as long as the grain keeps pulling it in. I stop after three to four minutes, even if the board looks like it can take more. At that point, if you turn the board over, you might even notice that the finish actually traveled all the way through the board. And after eight to 12 hours, I recoat the entire surface using long, smooth strokes and let the board dry for another eight to 12 hours. Before the final coat, I give the board a light sanding with 400 grit paper, and then I apply my final coat of varnish. The important thing to remember here is that we're not trying to build a finish, we're just trying to seal off moisture. Now I know a lot of you are wondering, can I just use a regular varnish? Well, my answer would be yes and no. Now, I've read on numerous occasions that nearly all finishes are non-toxic when cured. This does make sense to me since all the toxicity is contained in the thinner and the drier additives. But as a guy with a scientific background, I've got trouble accepting the word of an author if they don't list real scientific sources, and most of these articles don't. But if there are trace levels of toxic chemicals left in a cured finish, I really don't think it's possible for someone to consume enough of it through normal cutting board usage for it to make any difference at all. Now, I'm sure you take in more toxic chemicals every time you walk through a cloud of cigarette smoke or car exhaust. But when it comes to my family's safety and that of my customers, I really have no choice but to use a product that is labeled as food safe. And it's probably not a bad idea for you to do the same. A mineral oil cutting board should be recoded as needed. Monthly should be adequate. For a mineral oil and wax board, you'll probably want to add a light coat of oil wax mixture to the surface and buff it out. Now, one of the great advantages of the varnish board is the fact that it doesn't require monthly maintenance. But eventually, you will see some knife marks in the finish. In order to hide them as well as seal them, I like to give the surface a very quick wipe of mineral oil. I basically put a few drops on a paper towel, rub the oil into the scratches, and then wipe off the excess and the board is going to look great. Now regardless of the finish type, cutting boards are very simple to clean. Just use some hot water and a little soap. What? Dry the board thoroughly with a paper towel and set it on end for at least a few hours. This will allow the board to dry thoroughly. Now, if you have a varnish board, you can usually skip that step. Just wipe off the excess water with a paper towel and place the board right back on the countertop. Now, if you start looking for food safe finishes, you're bound to find a few products containing walnut oil. Although this oil makes a great finish, it could potentially be hazardous to someone with a nut allergy. And from what I understand, nut allergies are nothing to mess with. So just play it safe and skip the walnut oil. I'd also avoid using lacquer and shellac. Uh, both of these finishes are very hard, but they won't really stand up to the abuse of a knife. Not to mention, they're pretty pricey. But keep in mind that shellac itself makes a great child safe finish for toys and uh, even baby furniture. In fact, most of the shellac in the US is usually used in the food and pharmaceutical industries. So while I don't recommend chewing on your furniture, I suppose you could. <laughs> With proper care and maintenance, your cutting board should give you and your family years of service. When the board starts looking really rough, just take it back into the shop, give it a thorough sanding, and simply reapply your finish of choice, and the board will look like new. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at thewoodwhisperer at gmail.com. And I'd also like to mention a few other woodworking resources out there that you might find fun and useful. First, there's another really great podcast out there called Matt's Basement Workshop. The website is mattswoodshop.libsyn.com. Now this guy is really the pioneer of woodworking podcasting. I know when I was doing research for my podcast, Matt's show was the only game in town. He's got some really great information and some awesome tips over there, so make sure you check him out. Another excellent resource is lumberjocks.com. This site is really a social gathering place for woodworkers of all types. You can participate in the forums and even create your own weblog. 
And right now, they're taking entries for their 2007 Woodworking Awards, so head over to Lumberjocks.com and check that out too. That's all for today, so thanks for watching. Bye-bye.